Hey guys, it is me again. Today is Tuesday, November 29th. That makes it day 333. I'm going to project serve him more. Guys, the reason I'm blowing this is my third try to get this video made. And uh, I'm not stopping it because of nothing, you know, no vanity or anything. It's just the first time I started to make the video, I was about three minutes into it. And my stomach started hurting and rumbling so bad that I, I couldn't go on. I had to go use the bathroom. Well, the second time I started making it, I got ten minutes into it. Was started to read my, um, started to read the scriptures, and I noticed that my Esau was in Acts chapter fifteen. And I was read, I started reading Acts chapter fifteen. I said, "Wait a minute, we're not in Acts 15. So I stopped that one. I knew we were in nineteen. And uh, so I apologize, guys. Last night, I got to looking at last night's vid. I said, well, I'll just go check last night's vid and see where we were at. I read from Acts chapter 15 last night. And uh, some of you probably caught it. Uh, I've not checked the comments from last night's yet, so some of you probably did. But I, I apologize for that. I don't know. Every now and then, once in a blue moon, that e-sword will get switched. I don't do it. I'll just pull it up, and it'll be somewhere else. So I don't know. Anyway, guys, like I said, good to be here I hope y'all are doing all right uh, I thank you guys the ones that sent me your GPS coordinates or your or your addresses uh, I'm just I'm entering I'm entering these GPS coordinates into my little handheld deal uh, you know even if you're sending me your physical address I'm converting that uh, just kind of seeing how far everybody lives from me, you know uh, brother John Moro in, in Florida he's 500 I think he's 511 miles uh, now that's straight line. That's as a crow flies. That's this is not a GPS, a car GPS. It gives you driving directions. This is just one that you know, like if you're walking. So it's in a straight line. So I'm sure it'd be a little more than that driving it. But uh, Mad Bad Voodoo sent me his uh, address for his Kentucky house, and it's only 54 miles uh, through the air. I think it's 81 if you drive it. I, I figured that one out before uh, because me and Richard we we plan to meet up someday over there. Uh, whenever his schedule allows it, I'd really like to do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brother Woody has got the lead so far. His was 900, I think, and 66 miles uh, straight through the air. I think I figured it up on the map. It was something over 1,000, maybe 1,100 driving it. Uh, so I've not done. That's what I, was, I can't remember it, when Milo sent me his address to send his. Uh, sticker to him I don't know I don't remember I'm gonna have to look check that email again I don't remember if he sent me a post office box or a uh, physical address so I'm gonna recheck that if he sent me a physical address I'm gonna run his I'd say he'll be in the lead then um, pretty safe bet saying considering he lives in California that he's gonna be in the lead then but you know just something goofy that I'm doing you know seeing, seeing where you guys live so um Let's see what else. Oh yeah, brother Woody, you mentioned about the Glock deal, about talking to the cop. Uh, he's right. As far as just sheer toughness, there's no other gun that that will compete with the Glock. Uh, there's some guns that are probably close to as reliable, uh, but as far as just being tough, being able to be buried in dirt and mud, you know, it's because Glocks are simple and they're mostly plastic. I mean, that's the two things that makes them. You know, they don't have many excess parts. Most of their parts, even their internal parts, a lot of them are plastic. If you ever take a Glock apart, to be honest about it, when you take it apart, you look at it and you'll go, I mean, it kind of scary at first because you'll go, I'm trusting my life to 99% plastic parts, but, you know, they work. I mean, that's just a simple fact about it. They work. Um, you know, they, they are. Uh, a lot of people don't like Glocks because they don't shoot as good where they got that big, long, heavy, double action. Well, it's not even double action. It's a striker fire trigger a lot of people don't like that uh you know they like a sig p229 which is what i carry most of the time see it's single action or double action you can pull the hammer back on it you got a good light single action trigger i can shoot three times better with a sig than i can a glock uh, but like i said it, it, it's kind of preference it's 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 a bunch of different stuff you know a lot of cops have to buy their own guns, so that's a big thing too. You know, cost, or even if the even if the the sheriff's department or whoever buys it, the department buys it, 
you know, if they got to buy a bunch of guns, you know, a Glock's 500 bucks because that's another another big one that a lot of cops carry. A SIG's 900 bucks, so you're looking almost half price. So, but now a lot of your federal agencies, now you know how the federal government likes blowing money, but uh, a lot of federal agencies now they carry SIGs. Uh, Department of Homeland Security, they carry SIGs. Department of Immigration, ICE, they carry SIGs. Uh, and this this impressed me. The Secret Service and the you know the ones that protect uh, protect the president. I guess that is Secret Service. They carry SIGs. Uh, NCIS carries SIGs. The Coast Guard carries SIGs. Uh, a lot of federal agencies carry SIGs because probably because money's no object. Uh, and they're, they're really, really good guns. They're, 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 you know, they're, uh, they're double action or single action. A lot of people want that. Um, they, you know, they just, they have a decocker on them. And to be honest, they do, they probably shoot a little better than a Glock. Now I may get some flack for that, but overall they've got, they've got, because they're a single action trigger. They're just, they're going to be easier to shoot. A single action trigger breaks easier. It's easier to pull. You're going to shoot better with it. That's why most people shoot better with a 1911 than they do with like a Glock because 1911 has got a short single action crisp trigger. So, uh, like I said, as far as just being unbreakable guns, they are they're the most unbreakable gun there is. Me still, to be honest, I still like a SIG better than a Glock because to me a SIG's got all of it. It's got the dependability, but it also looks better. It's more metal. It's more aluminum. You know, it's a little bit weightier, more filled with gun. Uh, you know, like I said, shoots a little better in my opinion, uh, but they're double the price. So, you know, that's got a lot to do with it. So, anyway, that is the truth. Uh, but as far as about a gun, if you, if you told me right now you've got to take a gun out here and throw it in a tackle box and let it get wet and rained on and all this other stuff and you can only take one of your guns, what would you take? It'd be a Glock. Of course, that's another reason. Like I said, it's 500 bucks versus almost 1000 bucks. Which one, which gun am I going to put under a dumpster? It's going to be the cheaper gun, but it's it's the better gun too, as far as being to be beat up on. Like I said, there it's like everything else. You know, guns are it's 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 your choice. It's your you know, like I said, uh, uh, if I was a cop and they let me pick my gun, uh, you know, let me pick what what I was going to carry. Uh, I don't know. It'd be a hard choice. It'd be a Glock or a Sig one. I mean, that's just the truth. Nineteen uh, Elevens are good. I like carrying a nineteen eleven, but you know, as far as being a cop with a nineteen eleven, a forty five ACP, you know, it, it's a big round, but it's really not that powerful around a forty caliber or three fifty seven Sig. Either one has actually got more ballistic energy than a forty five, and uh, you know, you've got fifteen rounds or or even in my 229, which is a it's a smaller gun, you know, you've got 12 rounds versus in a in a 1911 you've got seven or eight. So you know you've just got so much more firepower with the uh, with the Sig or with the Glock or with that type of gun than you do over a 1911. So anyway, I think that's about all the gun talk I need to do tonight. Uh, like I said, guys, thank you for everything that y'all do. Uh, keep praying for us. Pray for the business. Uh, so far this week, it's been down. Uh, last week, last week actually wasn't too horrible of a week. Uh, to be honest, last week so far, the first two days of last week is up probably 25% over the first two days of this week. So uh, keep praying for us. And you know, that's the thing about it. I've not, I've not bought any guns. I've not wasted any money. I mean, that's the thing about it. I know a lot of times I holler about money and then the business down and and this and that, and while I'm hollering, I'm I'm also buying new guns and doing this and that. Guys, I've not bought a gun. Well, I bought that red hunting rifle a while back, but it also took me longer to pick that gun up than any gun I've ever got. You know, as far as buying a big expensive gun, I've not bought one in six months or longer probably. Uh, it's just, man, times are just getting tight. Uh, I just don't have the disposable money like I did have. Even a year ago, I don't have it. Uh, so just pray for us. Uh, I know the Lord's going to take care of us, you know, but it never hurts having good praying people behind you. Let's see, guys. Let's get started tonight. Next chapter 19. We're actually going to start in the right spot tonight. <laughs> Acts chapter 19, verse 17. This is where we're supposed to be. Let's go.
And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Now this is where the, the guys went in there to, to they thought they were going to exercise this demon out of this man, and because they were not really saved and they didn't have the power of God with them, this demon made a made a mockery out of them. It, it, it tore their clothes off of them and threw them outside. So verse 18, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So simple stuff, but this just basically means that you had a bunch of people here. You had a bunch of people here in Ephesus that were into witchcraft. They, they worshipped the goddess Diana. They were into witchcraft and a bunch of curious arts, as it calls it. And they took all their books and everything because a bunch of them got saved. And all the stuff they had that they were doing this witchcraft and everything with, they, they came and burned it. And they figured up how much money they had spent, is what this is talking about, on these books and all these different tinker, tinker toys and trinkets and idols. And it says that it was worth what all they had spent was 50,000 pieces of silver is how much they had wasted on this junk. So it says in verse 20, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. So we can see here that the Holy Spirit was, was just really climbing and getting people saved. After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the Spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Acacia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia, two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no, excuse me, no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, see, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So basically what's talking about, Paul was going to go on this big trip, and he didn't go. He sent, he sent Timothy and Erastus, and we can see why he didn't go. The Holy Spirit was telling him not to go. Demetrius, the silversmith, see, these people were buying all these shrines and buying all this stuff. That 50,000 pieces of silver, well, who do you think was getting a big chunk of it? Demetrius. So he was making this stuff. He was, he was made, him and a bunch, you know, not just him, him and my other silversmiths. These people getting saved and turning into Christians was killing their business because they weren't getting to sell this stuff anymore. So it says in verse, well, I'll read verse 24 again. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen, of like occupation, and said, Sirs, you know that by this craft we have our wealth. He said, This is how we make our money, selling these shrines to Diana. Moreover, you see and hear that not, a, that not alone at Ephesus, but all, most throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made by, excuse me, which are made with hands. I get ahead of myself sometimes. Basically, he's, he's saying this Paul guy getting these people saved telling them that, they're, that these silver gods and these things we're making are useless. It's, it's breaking us. So that not only this our craft is in danger, he's saying, but to be said it not, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship. But so see right here he's saying, not only is our craft getting her to be destroyed, but people are getting her to quit worshiping Diana, the true goddess, and you know she's going to be despised and and really, do you think he really believed in her that much? And you think he really cared that Diana was not going to be worshipped? Probably not. He was worried about his money. He was worried about his pocketbook. He was worried about his billfold. He didn't, he didn't give a crap about Diana or nothing else, I would say. I mean, I may be wrong. Uh, and when they heard these sayings, verse 28, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Di Diana of the Ephesians. So you can see he started stirring them up. In most places, it was the Jews getting stirred up. Now, here you had actually had somebody other than the, than the Jewish leaders getting stirred up. But here we had again Paul and the, and, the, and the poor old guys trying to spread the word of the Lord. They're getting her to get into it again. So, guys, we'll get into that tomorrow night. That's where we're going to stop in verse, uh, what is that, 29? We'll, uh, or 28. We'll start in verse 29 tomorrow night. That is, if, if my East were to stay on, the, on chapter 19, not go back, excuse me, the 15 like it did. Anyway, guys, like I said, thanks for being here. I love you guys. If you need anything, let me know. Thank you guys for sending me your addresses. Any of you other guys want to send them to me, send them to me. Like I said, if you don't, that's fine, too. Uh, thank you all for doing that. 
thank you all for praying for me. Like I said, keep praying for the business. Pray for the church. Uh, pray for I got a couple of vehicles coming up next few days. I got a Zuzu we're working on, putting a head and stuff on it. And it's a, it's turning into a mess. Uh, you know, we got a, that Ford truck we got to do that we got to do that transmission work on. It's going to be, be more work than I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, but it's kind of one of them deals I've committed to it now. And I think I can do it. Uh, you know, I just I just need your prayers, guys. So pray for me on that stuff. Anyway, like I said, I thank you guys for being here. Um, good Lord willing, I'll be here tomorrow night. If you guys need anything, don't don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, Darren, brother, if you see this, I'm sorry I missed your birthday. I remember you saying on one of your videos it was it was getting her to be your birthday or something. I must have had a brain fade, and uh, I know you got some stuff for for your birthday and. And, um, brother, I would have sent you something. I just, I don't know. I, I brain faded out. Uh, so, uh, ha late happy birthday. But I thank all you guys for being here, like I said. Good Lord willing, guys, I'll be here tomorrow night. So, until I see y'all again, good night and God bless.